And there you have it. The first six months of the newest console generation are behind us. Of course, there is plenty more ahead, and we'll be covering all the latest news, releases, and more right, on IGN, right. as well as on our weekly show, Next Gen Console Watch. Oh, be sure God. to tune in, follow along with us as I'll the journey of the PS5 and Xbox and Series X continues, and devote keep our time to, to seeing IGN. what the uh, multiplayer breakdowns got for us. <clears throat> if anyone shows up in chat, well, no one's here yet. I'm just going to start now by saying um, what I'm hoping for. At least half an hour of information. Like, maybe they'll show us an actual match from both sides. You know, we can see the IFF system where they're outlined in the team color and they just get to be what they want to look like. And then, you know, like, actual... Like, hey, this is what this weapon is. We're going to give you, like, the rundown of how it looks, how it functions. And then, uh, I want them to show the menus, at least the current build for the menus, and go, um, show us how the, uh, coding system works. Freaking Elden Ring, man. Oh, I am absolutely moist. Call me critical, because I am moist for that game. Was that the first trailer for Elden Ring? I think that was the reveal trailer, and then the one we got a few days ago. From software. Whew. Friend of mine on the interwebs just got a Bloodborne installed. <laughs> I'm super excited to see how, how they take it. Pieces of 1320 gear. I'm almost at the hard cap. Gauntlet and a prime. They said they're hard at work on the next Forza Motorsport, but goodness, do they already have a trailer for eight? is filled oh. with stories cool of legendary oh, heroes this is <laughs> this is fable reboot and treacherous villains like, oh cute Mary gets to get fantastical fight. creatures oh, cool. and wondrous places I'm a sucker for green where hair. nature and magic live in perfect harmony
Not all stories have happy endings. But yours has yet to be written. That one better be good. <laughs> the, pe the one people liked best, I think, was Fable. After that, it kind of just never got that bad. Halloween event I get to use this toothbrush for something else. <laughs> I love this. Donation receipt. A large donation has been made in your name to the Guardian Fund. Glimmer for Guardian, so that's a sign of reference. Alright. Alright. Oh Halo! Let's go! Oh, Needler looks great. Just the feeling of like being in a firefight and hearing the the click of the gun, throwing it down, grabbing one off the wall. So my gunner's upside down, and he's like laying in. I see kill assist, kill assist, kill assist. Any pistol across any of the games, is, whatever you know, gun the allows me to feel the most like John Wick. I am there. I remember yeah, how excited I was with like this big combat with vehicles going all over the place. Halo means something different for everyone, right? I think that's faces. I like it. Oh gosh, that soldier with the freaking camo coating. I love that paint job. Let's go! What is Halo multiplayer? And for me, it boils down to this tight uh, arena Stane, style it's have combat. Back. And Big Team Battle, this wide open, vehicle infused uh, kind of combat. We're taking that awesome legacy or classic uh, Halo aged. combat experience and oh, modernizing it in ways that'll feel fresh to old players and really exciting to new players. We're gonna give you great ways to customize your Spartan, really make your super soldier your own, and we're kicking off a journey, an experience that's gonna evolve month to month, season to season, oh, year after year. For me, Modern working legacy. through this multiplayer of this game, and I'm pretty the high. toughest challenge go, I think go. is really about how do we Dude, that beard. respect the legacy of what came before us, but still build something that feels new? We've yeah, tried that's to a million bring dollar all these elements of legacy whiny and really inject them into Halo Infinite. Evolution not just happen. like in a, in, a, in a way where you kind of won't notice like, it, where you feel like, oh, they really like designed this to be a celebration of previous Halo, as well as an iteration of where Halo can go next. This is the thing I always say when it comes to old versus newer gameplay styles, the is that they, of just, Arena they always have to build multiplayer from here on out. It was all about with classic movement in mind, earning everything, every kill but you get, have sprint built into the game, like, what is the core and foundation separate, the especially like the they do esports, separate into classic great. and evolve. Halo is really about all fair the, uh, and balanced starts. You know, so classic is Halo 3 movement, of sprints turned and off, and once they start running around, maybe it's about scavenging, uh, uh, equipment new pickups, toys and, and kind of maybe not, but developing your place the one run through the match bigger and the maps what built to that like kind of specification um, I feel like with uh, evolved the having is, you know the sprint the built and the full suite of when we set out to look at Halo Infinite from like a high level, that, if they and the Halo direction, Fly, like that, with there was lots of exciting things there because we really wanted to push one of the things that are true to Halo, but what are the, the things story. that fans haven't seen yet? <coughs> Just got like, equipment is bad, oh, that's equipment gonna is that's gonna piss people off over the, the gravity hammer that gets dropped out of their reach. <laughs> we ask questions to ourselves of if you could go after you know a power weapon to get a bunch of kills. 
uh, would you do that? Or could you go and get oh, grapple to make sure that bit. you swing yourself to the other side of a map to back cap a stronghold? We saw that as like another avenue of not just skill expression, but tactics for teams to coordinate around. The exciting combinatory nature. I like of, that deployable you know, shield. This with toy plus this toy and how those interact bits. with objectives is super amazing. Looking at how the power ups Ooh. play, like your classic power ups, like the overshield and the active camouflage. For this title, what we're looking at, what we're excited for, is you pick that up nice. and you choose when you activate like it. It goes into your inventory. If you haven't used it, and someone kills you in multiplayer, you drop that overshield, and then they can take it, use it for themselves. That, to me, is very legacy, but we took the equipment side of it and modernized it. When it comes to the vehicles, we went in and decided to invest a lot in the, the systems. When I take damage in my Warthog, uh, my, my wheels can get blown off, my hood can get blown off. There's different aspects of the vehicle oh, that no. change how my vehicle <laughs> handles. You can drive and a three-wheel Warthog? The other thing we added to cool. that is like this that's doomsday smart. mechanic. I like so that. when you hit this threshold, the vehicle catches fire, and it's very much you've got a certain amount of health or a certain amount of time, and you got to choose what you want to do with the last minutes of this vehicle. We've got a cousin to the Warthog, which is the Razorback. The back has this like multi-storage compartment oh, that you can sweet. put a lot of stuff into. So if you want to put like detached turrets, power weapons, fusion <laughs> coils, objectives, and that is what really making uh, the Razorback kick a lot of cool. butt. And then Dude, that's a transport hog. The Four Spartans. Define oh, that's going to make things so interesting. It is. And if you have the right kind of weapons, you could be more deadly than a warthog. They're entering like that what do they want to do? Uh, but then again, what type of experience are they get, hoping to have? What kind of combat? Yeah, well, what kind of dance laser. floors are available you to have that combat? Four game. kills with one shot. <laughs> oh, options. That, For me, BTV that is, is all about experiencing that is good uh, the stuff. full extent of the sandbox I'm of impressed. Halo three, four, in three. just one match. Right? I'm like so you see the vehicles, so the weapons, the equipment. We really wanted to take that Ooh, kind that of concept, nice those feels you had, you know, playing the play, playing the previous games, and just turn the volume up. Vehicles are no longer just spawning at bases anymore. Ooh, we have Pelicans delivering Wraith. them, and we have a commander oh, in your ear telling you that Ooh. Pelicans are going to be dropping off these vehicles. The tank is inbound. We have Halo 2-style like uh, Delta like Halo mission voice. weapon pods that fall Innovation from the sky the to I resupply like it. the I field. Do too, man. That's where it makes it feel like like a real battlefield, and, and it's very exciting. This is not just more players. This is just a certain beautiful slice of sci-fi chaos. I like the sound of this. Player expression, let's the go! The announcer is your big gameplay moments, your game modes, just like the way it was and before. And they brought the man back. Personally, I is really a reflection and information for the player. Designation so if a player grabs Buff. a flag, nice. your personal AI is going to tell you to, you know, get that thing back to base and give you some like moment-to-moment -moment updates. That's like the AI cores from Titanfall One. What if we can let players yes. choose their own AI, and each one of those are different voices? They so gotta have anti dot. The one they have to have anti dot. The <coughs> they, they and that add like female Virgil. Like I love it. As a, as a Spartan, being more important for, yeah. for us in multiplayer it is really about becoming a spartan your spartan you are you and personality the what the body of customization Coding content that we core. have on day one ensures that there will be millions and, of uh, customization combinations for spartans on the battlefield that includes things like armor coatings uh, armor emblems Show us how it works, please. various armor effects down to the individual armor pieces. So your shoulders, your gloves, your knee pads, your helmet, your visor, your helmet oh, attachments. Oh, the looks so Then good. you look at weapons. Oh, the got grit. a whole slew of customization offerings there. Weapons Vehicles bench? Have, oh, a, have a huge pool of customizations too. We support customization in the game. Players can do the same thing on HaloWaypoint.com as well as the Halo Waypoint app. The player also customizes the Spartan, the soldier inside the suit. We want the Spartan to represent the player as much as possible. They can change their body type and their voice, as well as choose prosthetics for the first time. Coatings offer us the unique yes. opportunity yeah. to craft some hyper-polished oh, looks and let you express yourselves in ways <laughs> you've that. never been able to before. So we're coming at this from a player-first mentality. So what first that means fire. is that there's no random loot in this. There's no loot boxes. It's very important to us that everyone understands exactly yes. how they unlock customization content. And we have a variety of places where they can do that. First off is the Battle Pass. Crap. The Halo Battle Pass will never be taken away from you. And what I mean by that is once you buy it, it's yours and does not expire. 
in future seasons, you can purchase old battle passes as well as the current battle pass and choose which battle pass to put your progression toward. <coughs> All of these rewards are single source, so you're never going to be confused about where things come from. If you can unlock something in the battle pass, we're not going to let any other players circumvent that by purchasing it out of the storefront. A lot of yes. our stuff is unlocked through playing the game. The armor only looks through amazing. Playing the game. All they have nailed the armor so far. Every season will have its there's own theme and from, introduce new components, new there's looks, aviators, new gameplay for players, new there's opportunities to earn and Dude, collect they got rewards. Everything. We've seen the the samurai. Mm. That's one of our uh, events. Sploosh. Armor cores. And that's going to be something that players can earn <sighs> through gameplay for free. Earn for free. And free to play. play. Free to play for the multiplayer part of the game. Dude, they, they are cool killing because, it. You know, this is going to be the best 343 Halo game ever, calling it now. When we have a new update there, watch me be they'll wrong. Just dip their toes in if they even just want to see it. I don't Not know what I'm going to do if I'm wrong. Play, but I'll do something. We play on PC as well as console, and what that means is yes, we're able to get the biggest audience we've ever had. Everybody gets to play with no barriers, and even better, your progression carries from one platform to the next. Getting yeah. our game I wish Overwatch on did PC that. and console <laughs> so at the bad. same time is an amazing chance for us to really just kind of excite new players about the game. How can we do things like make uh, cross play yeah, interesting and like even in just customs being able to just play with your friends that like some people have pcs and some people have consoles and like let them talk to each other Custom let them be games, friends man? why are you here to be a spartan the academy is a place that you can go uh with an mp to academy. kind of onboard into the experience it's great for newer players who are hey, still Sarah. picking up the controls nice and hair. also people who want to warm up for good head hair man making it's a series of experiences nice so this is the hub tutorial this is the hub. get started for Freak, the first yeah. time weapon drills to practice with specific Sword items and also so training cool. mode that you can use to just <coughs> Warm, That's a bot. The game that was a bot to. set to a preset. Players who are new to Walking, Halo, let's help them learn what targets. this universe is about. Because I'm bad at streaming targets. What are they about? And help them kind of know the vocabulary that people oh, have been seeing for now, oh. almost 20 oh, years. Oh, oh, so they'll be, oh, oh, they come in there, they don't feel like they're behind everyone else. Dang, they can man. kind of come in on an even footing. I mean, I'm super jazzed about bots. I think they're awesome. Yeah, Our goal with too. bots has been to have a variety of difficulties that kind of home. provide a good training partner for wherever you're at in the experience. Partnering with our players on the road to launch and after launch is absolutely critical, right? I mean, Halo's always been about the community conversation. We want to make sure we hear our players, make changes where we can based on that feedback, make sure the game is ready for launch, and then even beyond launch. What I'm genuinely excited about is taking the game out of our hands and putting it into the community's hands. You know, whether it's seeing what people make in Forge, or oh. the content that they're able to create with theater, watching streamers go after the game. To get involved, so go to haloinsider.com, put in your info with your gamer tag, and we should be able to reach out to you if we want to invite you to a Halo Infinite flight. Yep. We feel like we've got a pretty, pretty good selection at launch really and what's is. going to be there for our fans. And this isn't going to be something that is just a static set of items. We have some new stuff in the works already, and uh, just can't wait to oh, really get classic into that, uh, VR. as soon as this game comes out. Nice. Maps, new modes, a lot of people new are ways to customize your Spartan. Launch is just the beginning. Now we're just going to be able to talk, interact more frequently, and that's just going to be great. That is the future of Halo Infinite multiplayer. Thank you to the community for all their feedback over the years oh, so stay, far, stay and uh, I'm looking the forward team. to the road to launch, launch itself, I I was, and beyond. I remember being made to believe this was kind of just a temporary thing. Hey, come hang out with us for a year or two. Help us with this. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Regardless, I am excited. What even is real? Epic campaign. Oh my gosh. They're, they're gonna put the release date out on a freaking waypoint update or something. Or they'll release a trailer to YouTube one day. Like uh, Halo Infinite launched. Now a launch trailer comes out like the week before it comes out. It'll just be the next big Infinite trailer, I'm sure. It's gonna show a little more campaign stuff. That was it, already. 
Yeah, I was hoping for a little bit longer of a stream than that. That was, that was 15 minutes. 15 minutes of interesting stuff. So, so far, we've gotten, like, just shy of half an hour of Halo Infinite. Footage, content, etc. Free advertising, I say. Yeah, you're freaking welcome. Three days, three starting in. 15 minutes. So, I think that's the end of the Halo stuff. I really like the grapple hook. Yeah, so much potential. And yeah, people are probably gonna just get pissed about the power weapons getting snagged right from in front of them like that. But whatever. Halo has to evolve, man. You can't just re release Halo 3 all the time. You really can't. I'm glad they made these changes, and I think they just look logical and awesome. And probably the best course of action they could have taken for, you know, a new Halo game, especially in the wake of Halo 5's relative failures. Very, very uh, <clears throat> interested. And yeah, I, I'm just more excited without, like, getting way too excited. And hey, viewers that just joined the chat, they literally just ended the Halo stuff. Uh, they ran it for 15 minutes. Joe Staten gave us some more information. We saw new faces from inside the studio, so <clears throat> they're they're getting nice young people, people that grew up playing this. Like, I'm 29. If I put my 20s into game development and stuff like that, I I don't know where I'd be, but I, I could be working for 3 for 3 right now. Like, that's my age group that's making this Halo game, and it's just really cool. Uh, they they put a lot of really cool stuff out. They showed a little bit more of how uh, the hub world looks, the training facility, uh, AI personality and appearance customization. So apparently you'll get to if I if I read it right, then there's more customization beyond just their voice. But you do get your own AI chip with color, and uh, yeah. And I'm just saying they gotta have Anti Dot because Anti Dot was awesome. So yeah, all this really epic looking stuff coming into Halo Infinite. No microtransactions whatsoever. The samurai armor you can get for free through playing the game. There, the, the, the Razorback is basically a scout hawk. Four Spartans can ride it. You can store weapons on it, like turrets and heavies. Uh, what else, man? It, it's just stellar looking stuff, and I am. I can't believe I've been more hyped for Halo 4 and 5. So this point, just just because, as a person, I've grown into this, like, you know, don't, don't buy into all hype too much. So, like, I'm reserved about it, but I am so stoked and excited to see what Halo Infinite it has in store for us. I have more faith in 343 now than I ever have, and I've, I've always been an optimist with their stuff, so I don't know what that says about me, but yeah, that's a great start, so next for us is uh, uh, Pre show, Verizon and Television, Take Two Interactive Panel, Mythical Games. Nothing interesting is coming up. I'm not, I'm not going to keep on streaming and cover stuff that's not really of interest to probably most of the people who would actually tune into Halo Collector streams today, anyway. So we will come back possibly with the indie game showcase, but definitely for Capcom. I think I'm going to take a look at Capcom. Microsoft has added the new You know what? I might just I might just go back to streaming on my Twitch profile. To the, the Pulse 3D headset for Sony. So, I really like it a lot. It's I think for a hundred dollars, which is what it costs. I think you Yeah, you know what? I'm money. gonna say like we're probably done with Halo design. Collective and streaming really for today. Like we'll come back probably with, with your um, at the same and Dynamco and Nintendo device, tomorrow. And so you can actually be chatting Honestly, I don't think there's really anything else to stream for here on Halo Collective. We got a we got a Halo content, so which is pretty cool. Uh, people who might be watching this video again as a video and not the live broadcast, I will say, what do you like most about how Infinite looks? Uh, what new feature is the coolest? And, yeah, yeah, what, what new things do you like most? Let's just go with that. That's a nice looking controller. I've got the, they've the pulse red they've really nailed here. down their controller. Nice I'm super impressed with Microsoft black, on so Xbox team on that. So, um, okay.
Uh, okay. I'm your boy Breezy. As I said before, uh, post in the comments down below what you like most about this showcase today, uh, about E3 in general, what's your most excited uh, new game announcement that you didn't know was coming up. Let's go with that in the comment section down below. And, um, you know, for anything and everything Halo, you know, aside from the E3 coverage I'm going to be giving us tomorrow, that's kind of the end of it. We're, we're not really doing Halo Collective stuff anymore. We might add stuff on occasion. I don't remember where we exactly stood with it. But we're moving on to a new channel. And you know what? I'm going to announce that right here, right now. We actually have the channel up and running already. We have six subscribers. I would love to get our people adding on to that. So, Bear Gun Media. <laughs> it's such a weird name. Uh, we had this um, quick story about it. We had this... Uh, was it Isaac? I think Isaac just shared this picture of a freaking... There's this little toy thing. It looks like a gun with a bear's head. And it has like five dials for different animal sounds. And you just like, rawr, you make this animal sound. And it was like, bear gun, bear gun. We had this meme in our chat for bear gun. And then we had this working title for our... Uh, for like, hey, what's our general gaming and media channel going to be called? We had this name, like, oh, it makes sense, it's cool and everything. And it's like, oh, you know what, F it, let's just call it Bear Gun. <laughs> so it's Bear Gun, and Bear Gun is now right here on YouTube. Let me find it on here real quick. And post it on screen and in chat. Oh, gosh, that awkward guy. I love, um... Smosh, Try Not To Laugh compilations on YouTube. Those are hilarious. I love those guys. Filter. Channel. It's Bear Space Space Gun. We have uh, we have a GTA 5 Machinima. We have an MX vs. ATV Moment. We have Forklift Certified Halo Machinima. And uh, I'm going to start uploading... Uh, Xbox shorts for my gameplay sessions that are just like wacky weird and kind of just cool or fun. So uh, There is the link Bear gun media um, There it is <laughs> that is our new YouTube channel Search bear space gun, look for that image, and you probably got to hit filter to uh, find the channel because everything that comes up under bear gun is literally just like hunting and gun stuff and totally not related to us because we're a lowly six sub channel. <laughs> I'm going to use our 4,000 followers to like advertise bear gun for the rest of this and not, not to get our halo people into bear gun, but for the people who have been with us, who are interested in sticking with us, come to Bear Gun, see what we're about in the future as we start uploading content again. Hopefully, I'll add uply, I'll upload weekly videos, at least one for now, until I get my things going. Uh, the next Halo Machinima. Mm, I don't remember if Tyler wanted it on Halo Collective or on Bear Gun. We will see. But the professional, we're doing a new professional machinima. I have the script. I've had the script for like a year and a half. And I'm so, I've been so horrendously depressed over the last couple of years. It's been hard to make progress on it. So now things are looking up. I'm starting to uh, actively advertise for body actors. So Halo Master Chief Collection. Uh, we're probably just going to film on Xbox because I have more reach and accessibility there. And it's easier for me to record because I can record off of my PC from my Xbox. So my PC is just devoted to the recording process and not running the game as well because there will be chugging and frame rate issues. So I'm going to run Master Chief Collection off my Xbox Series X, which is of course butter smooth. So if anyone watches this and wants to hop into Master Chief Collection, on Xbox, uh, I, I might have to set up a, a contact method. You know, you'll you'll have to do the Bear Gun Twitter. Go ahead and send it to the Bear Gun Twitter at Bear Gun M. Uh, 
let's see. I am at real Chris Breezy here. This is me on Twitter. But if you'll load Bear Gun Bear Gun Media. There we are. We have four followers. That's pretty much just a Halo Collective team. So follow, help, support any way you can, please. We would appreciate it. And new Halo Collective, uh, new uh, professional machinima. I'm so good at English after 29 years. It's ridiculous. <laughs> um, yeah. That's pretty much all I got for you guys. So more video content coming. We'll get trailers for our our shows, our programs, as it were, our series, because I'm working on one with Adam and Damon. And then I personally would like to bring back Fails and Wins. So if you can, community, when we get building up more, we'll start getting people to send their clips in, and then we will, or send their clip links, or our... Or if, like send your gamer tag and then we'll find it on your page kind of deal and then we'll splice them together put some music on it like we used to in the old days and that was one of our better series in the hail collective days so i like fails and wins i like laughing along i always liked it when rooster teeth did it back in the day they did halo fails and wins and then they branched out to other games now i don't want to just emulate other channels but i think that's a good fun thing we could do that's a relatively easy output that gets the community involved and we do have the Halo Collective Patreon, which I'm pretty sure is going to bleed over into Bear Gun. Sorry, I just got killed in Destiny. I'm not, I shouldn't be watching my other stream, my other screen. But yeah, Bear Gun Media, that's us. Uh, I'll probably make an actual just like video showcasing like the things we're going to start doing and how you guys can contribute. And I'm going to end up with that. So, I've been your boy Breezy. Uh, I don't think we're going to stream any more E3 today just because it's all small scale stuff. And I, I am off work today, but I do want to actually do things, not just the computer. So, thanks everyone who came along. Bear Gun Media on Twitter. Bear Gun on YouTube. Follow us. This is our general gaming channel and we'll probably post other content too. I'll probably do face on camera stuff little I don't know I don't know if I can do skits I might just grab my halo figures out of a tote in storage and start doing like this stupid little mini series like Arby and the Chief who knows so Halo Collective is going over to Bear Gun Media for our videos in the future uh, the professional machinima might launch on Halo Collective or Bear Gun we'll see what happens but me Tyler the, la the rest of the game Lasky Isaac Max Adam, Damon. We're excited to do Bear Gun Media. And uh, thanks for being with us, guys. All these years, a channel deletion, a reemergence, better than ever before. We had a lot of fun as Halo Collective. But now we're just like, okay, you know, we're waiting so many years for Halo Infinite. Halo isn't the only game we love anymore. So we're going to branch out and start doing general gaming content. I hope you guys consider joining us. Go subscribe to Bear Gun on YouTube right here. And please find us, BGM, uh, Bear Gun M on Twitter. Follow us for updates. Interact with us because the Halo Collective Twitter is gone. It got yeeted into the ether. And if you would follow me on Twitter, I am at Real Chris Breezy. And yeah, there's my face up on there too. I don't think I have anything else for you guys. Uh, if you want to contribute to the new professional machinima on Xbox, you know what? I'll just make a video asking for that. But definitely hit us up on Twitter and follow us on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for everything. I'm going to end the stream here. I have, like, redundantly said things over and over again. I'm sorry for that. And I'll just, uh, I'll just get working on my personal life stuff I got to do today. And I'll start uploading uh, snippet videos and shorts so be ready to throw your clips at us guys thank you so much for joining me today and uh, it was cool to see that halo infinite multiplayer stuff i was hoping for just a little bit more a little bit more in depth but we'll get that from waypoint later this week i'm sure
Thank you guys. I'm your boy Breezy. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. They're adding touch screens while still keeping the same like in television two aesthetic, but at the same time to appeal to the younger audience, while every game is E for everyone, they've got things like emoji charades. So I'm, I'm hopeful that there's no, I mean, if I was the guy buying this, I'm like, we're not playing emoji charades, we're playing Missile Command. We're, we're skiing down mountains, we're being chased by a monster, and that's it. That's all we're doing. And I mean, to be fair, Earthworm Jim as well, probably. But, you know, like if you were playing this with a kid and they saw something like emoji charades, you're probably going to be playing that one. Um, yeah, so it's actually coming out on uh, 10th of October, so not too long to wait. Um, but they've got a showcase showing off some of the games and obviously some more features from the actual console itself. Tam, do you think you're going to pick one up? Absolutely not. Um, I don't think that... Uh... I think it's going to be interesting for people. It looks like everything about it is pitched towards, you know, younger gamers and bringing them in. The problem with it is, and I, I'm all for it. I think it's really cute. I love the idea behind it. I love the idea of coming at gaming from simplicity. But if we're really being honest, it is going to trade off nostalgia. People who know in television, who know the lineage and who know um, what it represents. And with that in mind, you start to, for me, you start to ask questions. Like if you're, first of all, it looks like it's going to retail at about $250. At which point are you convincing your young child, whoever, however you might be related to them, to have an Intellivision when it's roughly the same price as a Nintendo Switch, which all their friends have and all their, all their, all their cool kids are having and all the games are on? I think you're having a tough time there. So the only people in my mind that are going for it are like people who are like, I remember in television, I'm going to pick this up, but I'm going to say it's for this kid. In that scenario, I'm just like, mm, who is this really for? Like, ask yourself a question. Who is this really for? I'm glad it exists and I hope that it does well. But personally, I have 0% interest in it. Um, like, I can play a Missile Command in many different ways. I can play a bunch of these games in many different ways. But... I will admit it's a slick looking thing it looks really nice i'm kind of like interested to see how the controller works and i hope it does kind of do well i'd be so i would i will be surprised if it does but you know um fair play to them go for it yeah absolutely um and i think for me as well it's probably not the kind of thing that i will play but i'm intrigued to see more of it uh after in television there is the take two interactive panel so 
Uh, for everyone holding out hope that this is gonna be the day and the way that Rockstar, uh, obviously owned by Take Two, are gonna announce, you know, GTA 6. Not gonna be that. It's, um, I believe it's a panel on uh, diversity and inclusion within games. Um, so I More think everyone important kind of... than GTA 6. Yeah, super important, like a super important conversation to have. And I'm actually glad that Take Two are using this positioning and uh, within E3 to have that discussion. Uh, but obviously a lot of disappointed people who were like, oh, we thought it'd be GTA news. Um, I honestly, do you, uh, Dave, do you foresee any GTA news this year beyond, um, well, I mean, it, we're getting uh, the next gen versions of GTA 5. Um, and I think if you're playing GTA 5, and like GTA 5, GTA Online is going to be free on PS Plus eventually. And if you play a bunch of it now, you'll get free money towards that if you play it on PlayStation. You think we're gonna get any news beyond that? No, I think if anything, we're just gonna have more GTA 5 content. Like, it's still one of the most played games on every platform it's on, especially online. The thing just prints money. So, I don't think they're in any rush to make the next iteration of GTA. And if you look at how long they've had the next gen hardware or current gen hardware now to, to play and experiment with, they're, they're going to take their time and make GTA, the next GTA something incredible. Like, when GTA 5 came out originally, it was really leading edge and pushing everything it could out of that current, that, out of that generation of consoles. So I think they're going to try and make it go, like, big, big. And like I said, they've got so much just out there already that's got such a consistent player base. And the community for GTA is so healthy and also creative as well that it's... It's its own community is sort of also adding in new content you see on social media on TikTok all the time. My For You page is constantly videos of people racing trucks down this giant Hot Wheels track or they've crafted some sort of sumo arena where they bash trains into each other. I, I think that it's going to be at, at the very earliest next year when you might start hearing hints of, of the next GTA. I mean, I think as well, it's not like Rockstar to um, do a game announce as a part of someone else's show. You know, like we, I remember, I mean, maybe beyond agent, but you know, typically they can just, I remember when they uh, they changed their Twitter header to red and everyone was just talking about that nonstop that it was gonna be like the new Red Dead. Like they can build that, they were one of the very few companies who can just build that sort of uh, mind share by themselves. So yeah, I don't expect anything big uh, Rockstar wise today um, but Tam in terms of Take-Two's other properties uh, obviously they own Private Division um, and like I said we're not going to see any of that stuff today but when do you think is the next time we'll hear about some of those projects that Private Division are working on because they did publish am I right in thinking yeah they did publish Outer Worlds which was announced, uh, yeah. was announced yesterday yeah I think it'll be some time before we see any more I mean the the Outer Worlds too, especially considering that whole trailer was about we have nothing ready beyond the name. Um, but I, yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like Take Two, like most other companies, are reaching the point where they realize that they don't need to share the limelight with anyone. And especially for a label like Private Division, it doesn't make sense to be in amongst the kind of the hustle and bustle of E3. They are they're going to benefit way more for carving out their own space and speaking only when everyone is listening to them and only them. So I think it will be a little while. I don't expect it will be like years and years, but maybe even towards like a few months from now, they could start drip feeding some information about some of their games. But, you know, uh, it, will, it will be a while before anything major is announced, I think, coming from Private Division. Yeah, I agree. Um, so after the Take Two DNI panel, we've also got a um, panel from Mythical Games, who are developers of a, a game called Blanco's Block Party. The reason they've been in the news more recently uh, is because they're sort of it's an NFT games startup, which is a phrase that sounds like it's coming straight from Black Mirror, I suppose. Um, but ro like Blanco's Block Party is kind of I never heard of it until I was kind of prepping the pre-show notes uh, earlier today. Uh, it looks a lot like kind of Fall Guys meets Roblox, I suppose, in a way. There was, I watched the trailer, of course, there is a Fortnite um, flossing dance in there. So it kind of feels like they're pulling from all of these 
colourful, kid-friendly games. And then on top of that, they're adding NFTs. So I guess there's a lot of customization in there, like avatars, different pieces of artwork. But then they're also trying to uh, make a game engine, or they might have already made it, uh, but the Mythical Econ Economic Engine. Uh, which helps game devs make NFT-based marketplaces for their games um, that are all fully regulated. And so, Dave, what do you think we'll see today? This is a game that truly can only exist in this current timeline of 2021, isn't it? It's got like a dozen different buzzwords that six months ago no one had ever even heard of the the combination of blockchain there's there's nft stuff and I, I read that if you watch their stream during their show that you get an nft skin i'm not sure how that works but you can sell it on the in-game marketplace and trade it for other things it's 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 got some real weird like beat down strangeness to it i feel like like the black mirror nod i think is is very apt I mean, aesthetically, I, I saw someone describe it as um, they said, Mum, can we have four guys? No, we have four guys at home. And it's a screenshot of this game. So aesthetically, it's ticking all the boxes for that younger gaming audience, the, 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 the kids that play Roblox, that play four guys, that want the, the sort of same vibe as that. And I, I think the community elements of it, that, that everyone's coming together and making like four guys maps for this game, that's really cool. But on like the other end of that same spectrum of this of this game's life, you have the strange blockchain NFT stuff. And I don't know, like like NFT is pretty much falling apart now. Um, mm. Bitcoin had a massive crash. Blockchain stuff getting it, it's always up and down, but it's on sort of a, a downward slope now. It seems um, ever since Charlie bit my finger got turned into an NFT, I think. That was like the biggest I'd heard of it for a little while, and now it's it's sort of going away again. There's the obvious environmental issues that comes with this, and I know on their site they say, "Oh yeah, no, that's this. We're using different blockchain technology. That's not that's not a concern." But I, I wouldn't envy the people making this game because they're obviously doing something that they feel is ambitious. Um, mm -hmm. It's unique, but it's technology that I don't think a lot of people trust or understand yet, myself included. Yeah in a game that's very new and still in early access and now they have the uphill PR battle of talking up blockchains, NFTs, the environmental issues, putting all this marketplace trading stuff in a game that's very obviously designed for kids. So it's, it's a strange sort of chimera of a game at the minute. Yeah. Tam, anything to add? They can get these NFTs nuts. That's what I can add to that. That's about Jeez. it. You've been saying that for a while, any eh? of that shit. He has been well, waiting. I, I was watching like him the, the formulate most, that. It's the most whack stuff that you can put in video games. Just keep <laughs> that shit out of here, man. I, I am on. 